the almighty god is always with his afflicted saints no matter the situation no matter the condition no matter the magnitude of the affliction god is always with his afflicted saints he will not deny himself and he will not deny us he is always with his afflicted saints in every situation and the psalmist said in psalm 46 verse 5 god is in the midst of her she shall not be moved god shall help her and that right early and that right early so god shall appear unto the afflicted right early god shall come to your head at the right time he shall rescue you at the right time when the morning appears so god is ready to help god is in the midst of her of the church she shall not be moved the church shall not be moved the kingdom of christ on it shall not be moved the wife of christ on it is unshakable god shall help the church the kingdom of christ on it in verse 6 it says the eight enraged the kingdoms were moved the kingdoms were moved he uttered his voice the earth met it in verse 7 the lord of hosts is with us the god of jacob is our refuge seller the god of jacob is our refuge so that refuge is in us and is with us so the kingdom of christ on earth is like a mountain in the realm of the spirit and the church has been established upon the mountain we have the mountain on it the mountain of god on it this is a spiritual mountain and that mountain in the realm of the spirit is god that mountain in the realm of the spirit is god so we have a mountain in the church so the church is upon a mountain and the mountain is also in the church so as you are you are upon a mountain in the realm of the spirit and another mountain is inside of you and david cried out lead me lord to the rock that is higher than i there is a rock that is higher than you so you must believe in this rock and you will be safe you must believe in this rock so in isaiah chapter 43 verse 2 he says when thou passest through the waters i will be with thee and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee when thou walkest through the fire thou shalt not be born neither shall the flame kindle upon thee neither shall the flame kindle upon thee so god is ready to deliver us from affliction the way he delivered joseph from affliction he delivered joseph from affliction from the affliction of his brothers in the book of genesis he delivered him from the affliction of the potiphar's house he delivered him from the affliction of the prison so god is ready to deliver you from affliction the way he delivered joseph and god moved him from the prison to the palace from the prison to the palace do you know that the church on earth is the palace in the midst of prison the kingdom of christ on earth is a spiritual palace in the midst of prison so you are carrying a palace the atmosphere of the divine palace is in you you are carrying that atmosphere 
you are carrying that atmosphere so you are walking about with a palace invisible palace in the realm of the spirit and the lord gave joseph favor and mercy in the prison so even in the prison he became a leader and he became a great seer in the prison he became a leader and a great seer in the prison he delivered someone through the power of prophecy he delivered someone through the power of prophecy and through this grace upon him he became a prime minister in the land of egypt so he moved out of affliction and he entered into the realm of everlasting enjoyment so in psalm 105 verse 17 to 19 he says he sent a man before them even joseph who was sold for a servant whose feet they ought with fetters he was laid in iron until the time that his word came the word of the lord tried him until the time that his word came the word of the lord tried him in verse 20 the king sent and loosed him even the ruler of the people and let him go free and let him grow go free so the word of god can also try you and your word will definitely come your season will definitely come there is no affliction in this world without expiry date there is no affliction in this world without expiry date so every affliction in this world will definitely expire if you enter into a trouble it will definitely expire whether you like it or not it will expire And that is why you must see things in this world with the eyes of God. With the eyes of God. God can even produce a glorious thing out of your affliction. For Joseph entered into affliction. He suffered affliction. And through what he passed through, he was able to save a generation. He was able to save a generation through his affliction. His affliction opened unto him an everlasting door. It opened unto him an everlasting door of generational weight. So God can use affliction to open unto you everlasting door of generational weight everlasting doors of generational glory that means even in your affliction god will still be glorified even in your affliction god will still be glorified and magnified so in hebrews chapter 11 verse 25 he says choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of god than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season for a season that was moses he chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of god in the wilderness than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season in the land of egypt in verse 26 it says estimate the reproach of christ greater riches than the treasures in egypt for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward so by faith he forsook egypt not fearing the wrath of the king for he endured as seeing him who is invisible he endured as seeing him who is invisible so by the power of faith, Moses was able to endure. He was able to endure affliction. And he received his breakthrough. He delivered the children of Israel from the power of Egypt. 
if you will deliver your generation from the power of Egypt, you will experience the wind of affliction. You will see the storm of affliction. If you will deliver your generation from the power of Pharaoh, the storm of affliction will rock your ship. The storm of affliction will rock your boats. If you will deliver your generation from the storm of affliction, So you must be ready for the business. You must be ready for the business and engage the power of it. Engage the power of it in your journey. So God is always with the afflicted saints. Is always with the afflicted saints. Before Eli suffered affliction, God warned him through the ministry of Samuel. In 4 Samuel chapter 3 verse 18, and Samuel told Eli every wit, everything, and hid nothing from him. And he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seemeth him good. So the devil makes use of the children of Eli to afflict Eli and afflict the ministry of Eli. And God sent signals to him. God sent signals to him. But Eli failed to respond to the warnings and the instructions of God. He failed to respond positively to the warning and the instructions of God. So even in your affliction, God will send signals. So you must stretch out your antennas to pick the signals of God. You must stretch out your antennas in the realm of the spirit. You stretch out your network in the realm of the spirit to connect with the signals of God. Before you face any affliction, God will send signals in the realm of the spirit. So you must be sensitive. You must be highly sensitive in the realm of the spirit. You must raise up your spiritual perception in the realm of the spirit so that you can pick the signals of God. So in Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 4, it came to pass, when I heard these things, Nehemiah said, when I heard these words, these things, that I sat down and wept, and more certain days, and fasted, and prayed before God of heaven, and prayed before God of heaven, and prayed before God of heaven. He prayed because of the affliction of his people. He prayed because of the affliction of his people. And God showed him the route of escape. God showed him the route of escape. He showed him the path of escape. So God will always provide the way of escape for us. Even in our afflictions. Even in our affliction. For Job, in Job chapter 1 verse 20, arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped God. In the midst of his affliction, in the midst of his affliction, he worshipped God and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb. And naked shall I return eater, the Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not. In all these things, in all his affliction, he sinned not. Nor charged God foolishly. He did not rebuke God. He did not sin against God. Neither did he rebuke God, even in the midst of his affliction. 
even in the midst of his affliction, he did not rebuke God. The same thing, David, in the midst of his affliction, he worshiped God. He always worshiped God and encouraged himself in the Lord. So you must be ready to encourage yourself in the Lord. Be ready to encourage yourself in the Lord through the power of praise and worship. Through the power of praise and worship, even in the midst of your affliction, be ready to encourage yourself in the Lord. An apostle Paul received a prophecy concerning his suffering in Jerusalem in Act of the Apostles, chapter 20. In verse 22, it says, And now behold, I go born in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witness in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, Paul said. But none of these things move me, neither can't I myself, dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. To testify the gospel of the grace of God to testify the gospel of the grace of God in Acts of the Apostles chapter 21 verse 13 it says then Paul answer what means you to weep and to break my heart for all these afflictions for I am ready not to be born only but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus ready to die at Jerusalem and when he would not be persuaded, he would cease, saying, The will of the Lord be done. The will of the Lord be done. And Apostle Paul took all his luggages and went to Jerusalem. He went to Jerusalem. So you must be ready to fight against the wind. Of affliction you must be ready to fight against the beast that is in this world that beast is affliction so apostle paul did not rely on the prophecy of prophet agabus although agabus was a great prophet he gave a prophecy that's supposed to hinder the ministry of apostle paul so there are times prophecy could be hindrances to our victory in life. Prophecy could be hindrances to our ministry in life. Although prophecies are good. They are powerful weapons in this kingdom. We can engage the power of prophecy in spiritual warfare and overcome. But we must not still rely on some prophecies. Any prophecy that we hinder the dissemination of the gospel of Christ should not be welcome in the kingdom of Christ. Any prophecy that we hinder the advancement and the expansion of the kingdom should not be welcome in this kingdom. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, yes, Lord, it says, Being defamed. We entreat. We are made as the feet of the word and are of are the offscoring of all things unto these days. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the feet of the word, as the shame of the word. We are made as the shame of the word. So the apostles suffer affliction. The apostles suffer affliction. Paul said, I write not these things to shame you. But as my beloved sons, I warn you. As my beloved sons, I warn you. 
So Apostle Paul also said in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 4 to 10, he said, But in all things, approving ourselves as the minister of God in much patience, in afflictions, in necessity, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonment, in tumults, in labors, in washing, in fastings. So these are all the types of afflictions. In afflictions, in necessity, in distresses in stripes, in imprisonment, in tumult, in labor, in washing, in fasting. These are different kinds of afflictions in the world. By pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love on things, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left hand, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and by good report as deceivers and yet yet true as unknown and yet well known as dying and beyond we live as chastened not killed as sorrowful yet always rejoicing as poor yet making many rich as having nothing yet possessing all things so in the midst of the affliction we were able to survive so if poor can survive you have the power to survive you have the power to survive god is our refuge and our strength in this kingdom is our refuge and our strength we have that refuge and strength in this kingdom so in psalm 27 verse 5 to 6 he said for in the time of trouble in the time of affliction he shall hide me in his pavilion he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me he shall set me up upon a rock and now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me therefore will i offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy i will sing yea i will sing praises unto the lord i will sing yea i will sing praises unto the lord so he shall set us in the secret place of his tabernacle in the secret place of his tabernacle so you must dwell in the secret place of God. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So the shadow of the Almighty will become a blessing to you. If you can dwell in the secret place of his tabernacle, which is the kingdom of Christ on earth, for we are dead and our life is hid with Christ in God. With Christ in God. So our life is hid with Christ in God. Our life is in God. So God is our refuge and our strength. Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 25 verse 4. For thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat. When the blast of the terrible one is as a storm against the wall, is as a storm against the wall. So the blast of the terrible one is as a storm against our wall. But the Lord is our strength is our strength and our refuge in the time of storm in the season of storm is our refuge we are unshakable we are unshakable we are untouchable we are irresistible because there is a power at work in us that power is the power of the almighty god so in jeremiah chapter 16 verse 19 it says oh lord my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction the gentiles shall come 
unto thee from the ends of the earth. And shall I say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things, wherein there is no profit. So there is no profit in the world. There is no profit in other gods. There is only one God that can profit the universe. This is the Almighty God, the refuge and the strength of the church, the refuge and the strength of the kingdom. We have this refuge, we have this strength. He is our fortress in the day of affliction. The day of affliction will definitely come. The day of affliction will definitely come. And in the day of affliction, the Gentiles shall come to the kingdom. The Gentiles shall come to the kingdom because the kingdom is carrying the solution to the affliction. There is a solution in this kingdom to all the problems of humanity. There is a solution in this kingdom. We carry the solution for all the problems of humanity. So we are the solution to the problems of humanity. We are the solution to the problems of humanity. We carry the solution in the realm of the spirit. We are the answer to all the questions of humanity. We carry the answer in the realm of the spirit. We carry the answer in the realm of the spirit so we can deliver humanity from their shame. We can deliver them from their shame. Oh, because God is our refuge and strength. Prophet Naum said in Naum chapter 1 verse 7, The Lord is God, is good. He is God. The Lord is good. He is God. A stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. A stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. He is our stronghold. He will definitely comfort us. For the Almighty God will comfort us. The Almighty God will comfort the church. He will comfort the afflicted saints. And prophet Isaiah saw a mystery and he shouted in the old dispensation in Isaiah chapter 49 verse 13 Sink, O heavens, be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains, for the Lord has comforted his people and we have mercy upon his afflicted. The Lord has comforted his people and we have mercy upon his afflicted, upon the afflicted saints. So that is why you must sink. If heavens can sink and the earth can sink and the mountains can sink, you are to sink. Break forth into singing, O mountains of God. O mountains of God. These mountains are spiritual mountains. Sink, O heavens. Sink, O angels. Principalities and powers in heavenly places. Sink, O angels. Sink, O principality and powers in the heavenlies. And be joyful, O earth. Break forth into singing, O mountains. These are the churches of God. The mountains are the churches of God. So Isaiah saw mountains in the realm of the spirit representing the churches of God. The mountains are the kingdom of Christ on earth. In this earthly realm, we have spiritual mountains. So you are a mountain. You are to break forth into singing. You are to break forth into singing. The wind of affliction cannot stop you. The wind of affliction cannot carry a mountain. It is impossible for the wind of affliction to carry a mountain. Have you ever seen where a wind carry a mountain before? Have you ever witnessed where the wind carry a mountain before? The storm cannot carry a mountain. Mighty tornadoes 
cannot carry mountains. It is impossible. So nothing can carry you. The wind of affliction cannot carry you. It is only God that can carry you. You are untouchable in this world. You are untouchable and you are unshakable because you are a mountain in this earth. You are a mountain in this earth. So if the power of darkness should fight against you, that power will crash. Because you are a mountain in the realm of the spirit. So in Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 13, prophet Jeremiah said, then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance, both young men and old together. For I will turn their mourning to joy. I will turn their mourning to joy. And we comfort them and make them rejoice from their sorrow. I will comfort them and make them to rejoice from their sorrow. So God, we make us to rejoice from our sorrow, from our sorrow. We are going to rejoice from our sorrow, not in our sorrow. We are not to rejoice in our sorrow, but we are to rejoice from our sorrow. So we rejoice and walk away from the sorrow. So the joy of God, which is unspeakable and full of glory, will move us away from our sorrow, totally from the arena of sorrow. So no more sorrow, no more sorrow. That is why Jesus said in his teachings, in Matthew chapter 5 verse 4, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. So there will be someone that will comfort you. This person is the Almighty God. So the Almighty God shall comfort you in your sorrow and from your sorrow blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted you shall be comforted you will receive the comfort of god that is why apostle paul in his teachings in second corinthians chapter one from verse four he said to the corinthians who comforted us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God, are comforted of God. In verse 5, it says, For as the sufferings of Christ are in us, so our consolation also abandoned by Christ. Our consolation also abandoned by Christ. So God will comfort us through the ministry of Christ. So God will comfort us through the ministry of Christ. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 6, it says, Nevertheless, God, that comforted those that are cast down, comforted us by the coming of titus comforted us by the coming of titus so god can comfort you through the ministry of another person god can comfort you through the ministry of another person so god can use fellow human being to comfort you so it is the doing of the lord it is the doing of the lord not the doing of man it is the work of the lord not the work of man so god can use the ministry of man to comfort you in this earthly realm so in the midst of affliction god can use your fellow man being to deliver you God can use your fellow human being to deliver you. So we need men in this earthly realm. We need men in this earthly realm. If you will rise, you need men. If you will rise on it, you really need men. You need men to rise from one level to another. You need men to rise from one level to another. So God will use men to raise you. So God can comfort you 
and God will also preserve in Psalm 34 verse 20 it says he keep it all his bones not one of them is broken he keep it all his bones not one of them is broken not one of them is broken so God can keep you God can keep you in the midst of the affliction as God keep Christ on the cross God kept Christ on the cross he kept Christ on the cross he kept all his bones and not one of them is broken this is a prophecy concerning the ministry of Christ and the church this is a prophecy concerning the ministry of Christ and the church. So if God can preserve Christ on the cross and preserve him in the realm of the dead so that he escaped from the realm of the dead without injury. He escaped from the realm of the dead without injury. So God can also keep you and you will escape from the realm of affliction. So Christ went to the realm of the dead and he was delivered from the realm of the dead. He was delivered from the power of death and hell. He went to the realm of the dead. This realm of the dead is the realm of affliction. He went to the realm of affliction to deliver the afflicted saints. So you are delivered and you are preserved for life. You are preserved now and you are preserved forever. So in verse 4 of that same Psalm 34, he said, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. He delivered me from all my fears. So God will deliver you from your fears. He will definitely deliver you. In verse 19, it says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. Out of them all. So God is ready to deliver you from your afflictions. So you must face your fears. Do not fear your fears. You face your fears. Do not fear your fears. You face your fears and they will disappear. If you can face your fears, your fears will disappear. Your fears will disappear. They will disappear. So in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 13, it says, The wicked is near by the transgression of his lips, but the jaws shall come out of trouble. The jaws shall come out of trouble. As you enter into trouble, you shall come out of trouble. The just shall definitely come out of trouble. So God is ready to deliver the just. God is ready to deliver the just. He's ready to deliver you out of your afflictions. He's ready to deliver you out of trouble. He's ready. He said, I will deliver thee in that day of trouble. I will deliver thee. I will surely deliver thee, according to Jeremiah chapter 39, verse 17 to 18. He said he will deliver us from the mouth of, our, of the predator. He will hijack us out of the mouth of the predator, out of the mouth of lions. So God is ready to deliver. So God is the part of escape in the realm of the spirit. If you know the path of God, the pathway of God, you will be delivered. You will be hijacked from the mouth of lions. You will be hijacked from the mouth of lions. He's ready to hijack you from the mouth of lions. Through the ministry of Christ. Because Christ is with you. Through the ministry of Christ right now. Yes, Lord. Through the ministry of Christ right now. For Christ in his earthly ministry said unto his disciples, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will not leave you comfortless. For I will come to you. He will come to us. He will not leave us comfortless. He is ready to support us. 
he is ready to support us because we we will definitely face affliction in this world for the sake of the gospel so in second timothy chapter 4 verse 17 apostle paul said unto timothy notwithstanding the lord stood with me and strengthened me in my affliction that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the gentiles might hear all the gentiles might hear and i was delivered out of the mouth of lion i was delivered out of the mouth of the beast so apostle paul was delivered because god strengthened him he was supported by god he was operating based on the strength of god he said i can do all things through christ which strengthens me so there is someone that can strengthen you to do all things there is someone that can strengthen you to do all things you can do all things in the kingdom you can manifest any potential in this world you can display any wisdom in this world by the power of christ by the strength of christ he said of you enduring affliction you enjoy affliction you enjoy affliction you enjoy in the midst of affliction because the storm of affliction will not touch you in hebrews chapter 2 verse 18 it says for in that he himself has suffered being tempted he is able to succor them that are tempted he is able to succor them that are tempted he is able to support them and help them that are tempted he is able to comfort them that are tempted and this is part of the ministry of christ is carrying the anointing to help us to deliver us from the wind of affliction is carrying this special anointing and this special anointing is in the church right now this special anointing is in you you have the special anointing in you so in isaiah chapter 61 verse 2 he said to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord and the day of vengeance of our god to comfort all that mourn to comfort all that mourn to appoint unto them that mourn in zion to give them unto them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called the tree of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified so prophet isaiah saw the ministry of christ he saw the ministry of christ in isaiah chapter 61 so the ministry of christ is to deliver the afflicted from the power of affliction that is the ministry of christ the essence of his ministry is to deliver the afflicted from their afflictions so in the earthly ministry of jesus he was able to deliver the afflicted from their afflictions in his spiritual ministry in the realm of the dead he was able to deliver the afflicted saints from the power of hell and death and right now in his eternal ministry at the right hand of the father is intercessory ministry right now is for the deliverance of the saints so christ is seated right now at the right hand of the father making intercession for us so that we can walk in the will of god so that we can walk in the will of god we can manifest the will of god on it so that we can fulfill his ministry on it so the purpose of his intercessory ministry is for the comfort of the church so in the gospel of matthew chapter 11 verse 28 to 30 he said come unto me all ye that labor and I every lady i will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn of me for i am meek and lowly in that and ye shall find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my body is light so there is a yoke that can break yoke that yoke is the anointing of christ 
The anointing of Christ is a yoke in the realm of the spirit. If you are not strong, you cannot carry it. If you are not strong, you cannot carry the anointing of Christ. If you are not strong spiritually, you cannot carry the anointing of Christ in the realm of the spirit. The anointing of Christ is a yoke in the realm of the spirit. It's a yoke that can break yokes. So there is a yoke that can break yokes in this kingdom. There is a yoke that can break yoke in this kingdom. That yoke is in this kingdom. We have the yoke. This yoke is the anointing of Christ. And Christ said, For I am meek and lowly in that. And you shall find rest for your soul. So for you to carry the anointing of Christ, the humility of Christ must be engaged. You need meekness and humility for you to carry the anointing of Christ. Humility to the core. Humility to the core. Without humility, you cannot carry this power. You cannot carry this comfort. This power is for the comfort of our generation. The moment you carry the yoke of Christ, your life will comfort others. Your destiny begins to comfort others. Your ministry will be a source of comfort for your generation. Because there is something at work in you. This is the anointing of Christ. This anointing of Christ, which is a yoke, is for the comfort of your generation. So for you to break yokes, you need a yoke. For you to break demonic yokes, you need the divine yoke. And you must be prepared to carry the divine yoke for your generation. Not for yourself alone, but for your generation. So in Luke chapter 7 verse 13, it says, And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on this woman and said unto her, Weep not, Weep not because of your affliction. Weep not because of your affliction. So Christ had compassion on many in his earthly ministry and he was able to comfort many in his earthly ministry. And he said, the things I have done, ye shall also do and greater things than these shall ye do because I go to my father. Greater things than this shall you do. So you are to comfort your generation. You must have compassion on your generation. You must have compassion on your generation. Christ said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in my ministry. Believe also in my ministry. If you can believe also in the ministry of Jesus you will be delivered from affliction and you will also deliver your generation from affliction yes lord so christ said in the, in the gospel of john chapter 16 verse 33 these things have i spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace in the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. In the world ye shall face affliction. Ye shall face tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So we are more than conqueror through him that love us. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We have the greater one on our inside. The rock of ages is living in us. The rock of ages is living in us. It's inside of us. We are carrying the rock of ages in the realm of the spirit. So we can overcome the power of darkness in our world. Yes, Lord. So in all our afflictions, Christ is ready to preserve us. In all our affliction, Christ is ready to preserve us. He is ready to preserve us. 
So in Isaiah chapter 63, verse 9, prophet Isaiah said, In all the affliction he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved him in the wilderness. As the children of Israel journeyed through the wilderness, in all their affliction, he was afflicted. Christ was afflicted. That was the pre-incarnate Christ. And the angel of his presence saved them. The angel of, the, of his presence is a manifestation of Christ in the, in the old dispensation. The angel of his presence is a manifestation of the pre-incarnate Christ. It says in his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. And he bear them and carry them all the days of old. He bear them and carry them all the days of old. All the days of old. So he's still ready to carry us today. But before Christ can carry you, you must be ready to carry Christ. You must be in Christ. And Christ must be in you. So before Christ can carry you, you must be ready to carry Christ. Before Christ can carry you, you must be ready to carry Christ inside of you. So be ready to carry Christ. So Christ is ready to preserve us. He's ready to preserve our spirit, our soul, and our body. Even to the ear of our head, none of them shall perish. A single ear of your head cannot perish. If you can lay hold on Christ, He's ready to preserve. In the day of trouble, He's ready to deliver us from the trouble. And John the Beloved saw the mystery, this wonderful mystery at the islet of Patmos in Revelation chapter 3 verse 10 he said because thou hast kept the word of my patience I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which I come upon all the world and to try them that dwell upon the earth and to try them that dwell upon the earth I will keep thee I will keep thee I will keep thee from the hour of temptation the hour of temptation will definitely come it is the devil that tempts it is the devil that tempts god does not tempt it is the devil that tempts so the hour of temptation will come the hour of temptation is the season for the oppression of the power of darkness that time and season will definitely come but he said he will keep us christ will deliver us from the hour of darkness from the hour of darkness from the hour of temptation amen glory be to god and that is why you must praise god in that hour of temptation, you must open your mouth and praise God. You must engage the power of praise. You must engage the power of praise and call down the presence of God. You call down the presence of God by engaging the power of praise and worship. And the psalmist said in Psalm 13, verse 5 to 6, But I have trusted in thy mercy, and my eyes shall rejoice in thy salvation. I have trusted in thy mercy, and my heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord, because he has dealt bountifully with me. I will sing unto the Lord. I will sing unto the Lord. So sing unto the Lord the joyful song. Sing unto the Lord 
the joyful song. Sing unto the Lord the joyful song, and you will receive your deliverance. You will be free from the bondage of affliction. You will be free from the shame of affliction. So in Psalm 56, verse 8 to 10, the psalmist said, Thou tellest my wanderings, put thou my tears in thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? When I cry unto thee, then shall my eyes turn back. This I know, for God is for me. In God will I praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. I will praise his word. In God will I praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. So you must praise his word. You praise his word. You don't only praise God, but you praise his word. There is difference between praising God and praising his word. There is a difference between praising God and praising his word. Both of them are different. Many people praise God, but only few people praise his word. So how do you praise his word? You engage the word of God in praise and worship. You engage the written word of God in praise and worship. You engage the, the revelation knowledge of God in praise and worship. So you praise his word. You don't only praise God, you praise his word. The written word of God must be engaged in your praise and worship. So your song must be part of the written word of God. All your songs must be part of the revelation knowledge of God. We should be able to trace your praise and worship to the revelation knowledge of God. So the revelation knowledge of God should be the foundation of your praise and worship. You praise his word. Not only praise him, you praise his word. So in Psalm 57, verse 6 to 7, Psalm 57, verse 6 to 7, it said, They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have digged a pit before me into the midst whereof they are falling themselves. Selah. My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. I will sing and give praise. My heart is fixed on God. My heart is fixed on God. I will sing and give praise. I wake up, my glory. Awake, Saturday and up. I myself will awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations. I will sing unto my God among the nations. So you rise up early and you sing praises to God. You sing to God. You rise up early and you sing to God. You sing to God. So the power of praise is the key in this kingdom. You activate the mysteries of the kingdom through the power of praise and worship. Through the power of praise and worship. The power of praise and worship can pull down the wall of Jericho. It can pull down your walls of Jericho. So there are walls of Jericho surrounding you. But if you can engage the power of praise and worship, the walls of Jericho around you shall be pulled down. The walls of Jericho around you shall be pulled down. Through the power of praise and worship. So the power of praise can attack the foundation of your problem. It can attack the foundation of your problem. It can stop the wind 
and not also say to the water, Peace be still. As Jesus rebuked the wind and the water, the source of the problem. Many people are rebooking the wind, but they fail to rebook the water. But through the power of praise, you will attack the wind and attack the source of the wind. As the children of Israel dance around the city of Jericho for complete seven days and they engage the power of praise and worship, the walls of Jericho fell down flat. The walls of Jericho fell down flat because the foundation of that wall was attacked. The foundation of the walls of Jericho was attacked in the realm of the spirit. So there is something that can attack the foundation of the walls of your affliction. In the realm of the spirit, this is the power of praise and worship. So in Psalm 71, verse 20 to 23, it says, Thou which hast shewed me great and sore troubles, shall I quicken me again, and shall I bring me up again from the depths of the earth? Thou shalt increase my greatness, and comfort me on every side, and comfort me on every side. Thou shalt increase my greatness, and comfort me on every side. In verse 22, I will also praise thee with this heart tree, even thy truth, O oh my God. Unto thee will I sing with the harps, O oh, thou only one of Israel. My lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing unto thee, my soul, which thou hast redeemed, my soul, which thou hast redeemed. So your redeemed soul must sing praises to God. Your redeemed soul must sing praises to God. So you must sing praises to God from your inner man to your outer man. Your inner man must sing praises to God and your outer man must demonstrate it. Your outer man must demonstrate it. So you must imitate Christ. You must imitate Christ in this earthly realm. Imitate Christ in, in this earthly realm. In the epistle to the Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, he said, Wherefore, seeing we also, a compass about we so great a cloud of witness let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do so easily beset us and let us let us run with patience the race that is set before us you run with patience the race that is set before you it says looking unto jesus the author and the finish of our feet who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God sat down at the right hand of the throne of God because of the glory that was set before him because of the glory that was set before him he endured the cross he despised the shame and he sat down at the right hand of God. For consider him that endure such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your mind. You consider him. You consider him. You consider him. You must follow Christ. You imitate Christ. To consider Christ means to imitate Christ. You must imitate Christ. In this earthly realm, you imitate him. Be examples of Christ. Be followers of Christ. And follow the steps of Christ in this earthly realm. Demonstrate the life of Christ. And as you demonstrate the life of Christ, you will deliver yourself and deliver your generation. You will deliver yourself and deliver your generation. I pray that your spirit man be quickened to receive this mystery. 
I pray that your mind be enlarged to carry this revelation knowledge. To carry this revelation knowledge. This revelation knowledge is too much. It's so deep for this generation. It's so deep for this generation. If your mind can carry this revelation knowledge, you will do well. You will do well in this world. You will be the envy of the time. You will become the envy of the time. If you can carry this mystery, if you can carry this mystery, so that is why James said in James chapter 5, verse 10, Take my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. For an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Take my brethren, the prophets, imitate the prophets. So you imitate the fathers in this kingdom. You imitate the fathers in this kingdom. So you must be under the fathers. You must be a disciple under the fathers so that you can overcome the afflictions on your part. You must be a disciple under the fathers and imitate the fathers. Imitate the fathers. The fathers are, are carrying the church in the realm of the spirit. The fathers in this kingdom have invisible wings and they engage that invisible wings to carry the church. They engage their invisible wings to carry the church. So I pray that your eyes be open so that you can see the invisible wings of the fathers and quickly hang on that invisible wing. So if you can hang on the invisible wings of the fathers in this kingdom, you will go far. You can go with the strength of the fathers. So you must recognize the ministry of the fathers. You recognize the ministry of the fathers and imitate the fathers. Imitate the fathers. Do not look at their weakness. Look at their strength. Do not look at the weakness of your spiritual father. Look at the strength of your spiritual father. The strength of your spiritual father can carry you. The strength of your spiritual father can carry you. The strength can carry you in the day of tribulation. So be patient enough to serve the fathers. Be patient enough to serve the fathers and run the race. Yes, Lord. So in the gospel of Luke chapter 21 verse 19, it says, In your patience, possess ye your souls. In your patience, possess ye your souls. So you need patience. You need patience. In this kingdom, Apostle Paul said, Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continue instant in prayer. Patient in tribulation, in affliction. In Romans chapter 12, verse 12. Patience in tribulation. So Apostle Paul, stir up the Roman Christians. Be patient in tribulation. Be patient in your affliction. Learn to persevere. Learn to endure. Let endurance prevail. Be possessed with the spirit of perseverance. Even in your affliction. So in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 4, it says, So that we ourselves glory in you, in the churches of God, for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. Your patience, your patience and faith. 
in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. So you must endure the tribulation. You must endure the tribulation and persecution. So also James said in James chapter 1 verse 4, But let patience have a perfect work in you, that ye may be perfect, and entire wanting nothing. Ye may be perfect. Ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. Let patience have a perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. Wanting nothing in this kingdom. So through patience, you can demonstrate the wisdom of God. Through your patience, you can demonstrate the wisdom of God. So you must be ready to persevere in this kingdom. Perseverance is the key. In the day of affliction, perseverance is the key. In the day of affliction, in the day of affliction, so if you faint in the day of affliction, in the day of little beginning, your strength is small. Your strength is small. So you must build your strength by engaging the midst of perseverance. Perseverance is a great power in this kingdom. The ability to endure from the beginning to the end. The ability to endure all things from the beginning to the end. So in First Peter chapter 2, verse 20, he said, For what glory is it? If when ye be buffeted for your fault, ye shall take it patiently. But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. This is acceptable with God. If ye do well and suffer for well doing, if ye do it and suffer for good pain, for a job well done, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. This is acceptable with God. This is acceptable with God. So you need patience in this kingdom. You need patience in this kingdom. Be patient. Please be patient. In the day of affliction, please be patient so that you can overcome. Be patient so that you can overcome. So in Psalm 39, verse 9, the psalmist said, Psalm 39, verse 9, the psalmist said, I was dumb. I opened not my mouth because thou did it. I opened not my mouth. Because thou did it. Another powerful key in the day of affliction is the power of silence. Can you please write? The power of silence. The power of silence. There are situations you will find yourself that you have to keep silence. You just have to keep silent. Be silent. You engage the power of silence. It's a great power in this kingdom. Silence does not mean that you are weak. Silence means you are too strong for the battle. Silence means you are too strong for the battle. It means you are too strong for the battle. It means you are too strong for the battle. You are stronger than the affliction. So you must learn to keep silence. In this kingdom, in the day of affliction, be silent. And the psalmist said, I was silent because thou did it. I was dumb. Not that I was dumb, but I behave as if I was dumb. And I open not my mouth because thou did it. So silence is a great power in this kingdom. You can overcome many battles by engaging the power of silence. Many battles 
by engaging the power of silence. If you can sustain your quietness, you will be strong. For in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. It shall be your strength. Even as you receive correction, please be quiet. As you receive correction, please be quiet. As you receive instruction, please be quiet. And Job said in Job chapter 5 verse 17, Behold, happy is the man whom God corrected. Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. Despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. So in the day of affliction, you must not despise the chastening of the Almighty. You must not despise the correction of the Almighty. This is another powerful key in this kingdom. And in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 11, he says, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction, neither be weary of his correction, neither be weary of his correction. So be ready for the correction of the Lord. Be ready for the correction of the Lord. The chastening of the Lord will not destroy you. It will make you. The correction of the Lord will not mar you. But the correction of the Almighty God will make you a, a better person. The correction of the Lord will not destroy you. But the correction of the Lord will make you a better person. That correction will produce a good thing out of your ministry. It will produce a glorious thing out of your destiny. So be ready for the correction of the Lord. Do not run away from the correction of the Lord. Do not despise the chastening of the Lord. So occasionally God will chastise you. God will chastise you in order to correct you. God will chastise you in order to correct you. And if you can endure this correction, you will go far. If you can endure this correction, you will become a great man in this earthly realm. So in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 5, it says, And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, my son. Despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuke of him. Despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuke of him, nor faint when thou art rebuke of him. You despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. And do not faint when you are rebuked by the Lord. Do not faint when you are rebuked by the Lord. Be ready for the correction. Be ready for the correction of the Lord and acknowledge the justice of the Lord. You acknowledge the justice of the Lord. For the Almighty God is a just God. He is a righteous God. He is always righteous. God cannot be wrong. He is always right. He cannot be wrong. So please endure the correction. God cannot be wrong. So in Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 33, it says, How be it, thou art yours in all that is brought upon us, for thou hast done right, but we have done wickedly. Thou hast done right. He will always be right. God will always be right. He will always be right. Job said, Shall we receive good at the hand of the Lord? And shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. He praised the Lord. Even in his temptation, even in his destruction, he praised the Lord. So you must praise the Lord. Prophet Isaiah also saw this mystery in Isaiah chapter 64. 
You see the old Isaiah chapter 64 loaded with the mystery. You must acknowledge the justice of the Lord. You acknowledge the justice of the correction of the Lord. You rejoice in the Lord and rejoice in his work for he is righteous. His righteousness will prevail. His righteousness will prevail over us. His righteousness will prevail. So you must not complain as a man. You must not complain. You must not murmur. Just receive the correction of the Lord. In the time of affliction, do not murmur. Do not complain. Lamentation, chapter 3, verse 39 says, Wherefore, do a living man complain? A man for the punishment of his sins. Will you still complain for the punishment of your sin? Prophet Micah said in Micah chapter 7 verse 9, I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. He will still bring me forth to the light. So after the correction of the Lord, he will bring us forth to the light. He will bring us forth to the light so that we will carry the light and shine the light in our world. The church is the lamp for the demonstration of the light of God. The church is the lamp that is carrying the light of God. So you must receive the correction of the Lord so that you can shine the light that you are carrying. You receive the correction of the Lord so that you can shine the light that you are carrying. So please avoid sin. For you to shine the light, run away from sin. Run away from sin. Run away from iniquity. If you have done any iniquity, please do it no more. Run away from a lifestyle of sin. And Jesus, in his teaching, in his earthly ministry, in John chapter 5, verse 14, Gospel of John chapter 5, verse 14, Afterward, Jesus, findeth him in the temple, said unto him, He said unto the man that he has delivered, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. So sin can attract affliction. Sin can attract the wind of affliction. Please run away from sin. Run away from a lifestyle of sin. Apostle Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 12, Having your conversation honest, Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your work, good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. They may by your good works. So you must continue your good works in the midst of the Gentiles. They may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation so there will be a day of visitation so your good work can deliver the Gentiles your good work can deliver the sinners from their affliction in the day of affliction so they will glorify God in the day of affliction they will glorify God because of your ministry in the day of affliction. Your ministry can glorify God in the life of the brethren. Your ministry and your lifestyle can glorify God in the midst of the, of the Gentiles, in the midst of the 18. Among the children of the world, demonstrate good works. Among the children of the world, demonstrate good works. Your good works can save you and save them in the day of affliction. Yes, Lord. And Job said in Job chapter 13, verse 15. 
though he slay me yet will i trust in him but i will maintain my own ways before him i will maintain my own ways before him so no matter the situation maintain your own way before him trust in the goodness of god trust in the goodness of god even in the midst of affliction in verse 20 of psalm 71 he said though wish has shield me great and sore troubles shall quicken me again and shall bring me up again from the depth of the earth shall quicken me again god which has shield me thou which has shield me god which has shield me great and sore troubles shall quicken me again shall give life unto me again and shall bring me up again from the depths of the earth from the depths the depths of the earth it shall bring us up again from trouble so the psalmist saw the mystery of the resurrection of Christ and the ascension of Christ. It shall bring me up again from the depth of the earth. The mystery of the resurrection of Christ. And we have that resurrection power. So we must trust in the goodness of God and trust in his resurrection power. His resurrection power is at work in us. And Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9, But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, we should reset the dead. We must trust in God, we should reset the dead. Even if you have the sentence of death, even if you receive the sentence of death, there is a God that can raise the dead. There is a God that can deliver you from the sentence of death. So you must trust in this God and trust in his goodness. You trust in this God and trust in his goodness. So in Psalm 116, starting from verse 7 to 9, he said, Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death my eyes from tears and my feet from falling i will walk before the lord in the land of the living i will devote myself to god in the land of the living so you must walk before the lord in the land of the living you walk before the lord you walk in the lord and you walk with god you walk before god you walk in god and you walk with god So you must turn to God and be devoted to the things of the kingdom. Turn to God and be devoted to the things of the kingdom. Good stewardship in this kingdom is the key to success. Good stewardship in this kingdom is the key to success. So you must serve in this kingdom. There is a place of service there is a place of service and as you serve god you, you remind god of your affliction you remind god of the wind of affliction that is blowing around your corridor you remind god of the yoke that is sitting upon your destiny as you serve god in this kingdom So there is a place of service. There is a place of service. And that is why Prophet Hosea said in Hosea chapter 6 verse 1. Come, let us return unto the Lord. For he has turned and he will heal us. He has smitten and he will bind us up. He has torn and he will heal us. And he has smitten and he will bind us us up so god has told and he will heal us he's ready to heal 
just be devoted to God and to the things of the kingdom. Great prophet like prophet Isaiah also saw the mystery of devotion. And this prophet unveiled the mystery of devotion in his prophecies and in his writing. In his prophetic writing. Prophet like prophet Jeremiah also saw this mystery in Jeremiah chapter 50. They talk about the devotion of the saints. So you must be devoted to the things of the kingdom. You go and seek the Lord. Seek the Lord all the days of your life. There is a place of seeking. There is a place of asking. And there is a place of knocking. They are different. There is a place of asking. There is a place of seeking. And there is a place of knocking. So you must seek the Lord. You seek for him. And you will get him. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Psalm 66, verse 13 to 15. Psalm 66, verse 13 to 15. It says, I will go into thy house with burnt offerings. I will pay thee my vows. I will pay thee my vows, which my lips have uttered, and my mouth have, have spoken. When I was in trouble, I will offer unto thee burnt sacrifices of fatlings. With the incense of rams, I will offer bullocks with goats, seller. I will offer bullocks with goats, seller. When I was in trouble, I will pay my vows, which my lips have uttered, and my mouth as smoking and my mouth as smoking when i was in trouble so there are vows that you have vow you must pay your vow you pay your vow to the lord occasionally we make vows whenever we are in affliction and it's one of the principles in this kingdom this is one of the principles in this kingdom. They are spiritual principles. You make vows to God in time of affliction. And when God delivers you from the affliction, you pay your vow. Whenever God delivers you from the affliction, you pay your vow. So it is a must for you to pay your vow. I will pay thee my vows. I will go into thy house with burnt offerings. So vows are one of the ways by which we can raise spiritual altars to God. We can engage the mystery of vows to raise spiritual altars to God. In the realm of the spirit, we raise spiritual altars to God. We raise spiritual altars to God by engaging the mystery of vows. In the day of affliction, we must make vows and pay our vows. These vows will raise spiritual altars in the realm of the spirit so that we can overcome the battle. And as you raise spiritual altars, you must also raise altars of prayers. You must raise altars of prayers. You must be frequent in prayer. In this kingdom, be frequent in prayer. Pray without ceasing. Whether you are in season or out of season, you must pray. Engage the ceaseless prayer. Engage the ceaseless prayer. Pray in the morning. Pray in the afternoon. Pray at night. Be a watchman in this kingdom. Be a watchman in this kingdom. In Psalm 50 verse 15 to 17. It says, And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. But unto the wicked, God said, What hast thou to do to declare my status? 
or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth, seeing that thou hatest instruction and casteth my words behind thee. See, thou hatest instruction and casteth my words behind thee. So engage the instructions of the Lord and the words of the Lord. You need the revelation knowledge of God. Prayer is speaking the word of God back to God. Prayer is speaking the word of God back to God. Prayer is showing God what is written in the word of God. You show God what is written in his words. You show God what is written in the Bible. That is prayer. You speak out the word of God. You speak out the written words of God. So the written word of God in your mouth is prayer. The written words of God in your mouth is prayer. So you pray by engaging the revelation knowledge that you know. You pray by engaging the revelation knowledge that you have. You pray frequently. You pray in season and out of season. You pray always. You pray always. If there is a man that can pray in the society, there is a God that can answer. If there is a single man that can pray for a nation, there is a God that can answer. And God is ready to answer. God is ready to answer and stop the storm of affliction that is ravaging our world. God is ready to stop the storm of affliction that is ravaging and rocking our universe. So you have the power to steal the storm of affliction. You have the power to steal the storm of affliction. Engage this power. Engage this power. Engage it. Let your eyes be open to the realities of the kingdom. Let your eyes be open to the realities of kingdom power. Let your eyes be open. Let your eyes be open. Begin to engage kingdom powers and you will prevail over the wind of affliction. Instead of you being destroyed by the wind, the wind will even assist you to fly. <laughs> if you can engage the power that is in this kingdom, the wind will carry you like an eagle and you will fly by engaging the power of the wind of affliction. So as believers, we must engage the power of that wind of affliction to fly, to take a flight into the higher realm. Spiritually, we are to take a flight. Emotionally and physically, we are to take a flight into the higher realm, from the lower realm to the higher realm, from the higher realm to the highest realm, by engaging the wind of affliction. So the wind will even help us to fly. As the wind is destroying the children of the world, we are to fly. We are to take a flight because we are in the kingdom of high flyers. Yes, Lord. We are in the kingdom of high flyers. We are to fly in this kingdom. If your eyes can be open to see this power, you will fly. If your eyes can be open to see the power in the kingdom, you will fly in your world. So begin to fly. Irrespective of the situation, begin to fly. Yes, Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah.